Good evening, everyone. It's a, it's a pleasure to have you all here tonight. You all look so great. The women are lovely. The men are handsome. And on behalf of the university and Pam Davis and Barbara Snyder, we'd like to welcome you here to this, this reunion for all of us. My uh, alumni, fellow alumni here have turned into a bunch of paparazzi. <laughs> We're going to start the program by the introduction of our president of Case Western Reserve University. Barbara Snyder became president of Case Western Reserve University in 2007. Uh, President Snyder earned her bachelor's degree from Ohio State and is a graduate of the University of Chicago Law School, where she served as executive director of its law review. After serving as an associate at the Sidley and Austin law firm in Chicago, President Snyder spent five years at Case Western Reserve University as a law professor. She later joined OSU's Morris College of law, where she went on to various leadership positions, eventually rising to serve as executive vice president and provost of the Ohio State University. Over a four-year period, her initiatives at OSU supported innovative proposals in high-impact areas, including climate, water, and carbon, mathematical biosciences, and music, media, and enterprise. She also championed improved benefits for graduate students and paid parental leave for faculty, staff, and graduate students, among many other accomplishments. From OSU, Barbara returned to Case Western Reserve University as president. Her track record has been remarkable. In her first two years in office, she eliminated a multi-million dollar deficit three years ahead of schedule, set new fundraising records, and completed the university's first strategic plan in more than a decade. We are very grateful to have President Snyder, and we look forward to continued success under her dynamic leadership. Please welcome President Snyder tonight. Thank you, Dr. Briggs. I want to commend you and your entire medical school class, the class of 1959, for your efforts to make <laughs> for your efforts to make this reunion as remarkable as your class is. So it really is quite a milestone, and you are celebrating it with grace and style and a sense of appreciation for the experience you had here at Case Western Reserve and for the things you shared with one another. I'm truly honored to be here tonight. As you probably know, this has been a very good year for Case Western Reserve University, despite the economic challenges. It's also been a terrific year for our School of Medicine. And I want you to know what an important part of Case Western Reserve the School of Medicine is both in terms of what it achieves for society and also, of course, what it contributes to our university's academic stature. You might not know this, but the School of Medicine accounts for over 80% of the external research dollars brought in to Case Western Reserve every single year. Wow. Those faculty researchers attract undergraduate students who want to work in their labs and the top medical and doctoral students every single year. They are involved in a number of interdisciplinary efforts, including the Department of Biomedical Engineering celebrating its 40th anniversary this year. Our health law program ranks fifth in the country and of course wouldn't be where it is without the collaboration with our School of Medicine. I hope you had an opportunity to drive down Martin Luther King Boulevard today near our campus. If you did, you saw some banners with giant numbers on them. One of them is nine, which is the national ranking for the Department of Family Medicine at the School of Medicine. Applause 
Pediatrics is 12th, AIDS is 13th, the School of Medicine is ranked in US News number 25. When it comes to NIH awards, though, 17th. We are very proud of that. When you consider that there are 130 accredited medical schools in the United States, we are in impressive company with those numbers. And we are tremendously proud of the medical school's history and its accomplishments. But even more exciting is what is yet to come. To give you an idea of the momentum here, I want to just say something about our efforts to secure stimulus funding. Starting last spring, some of you heard me say earlier that our faculty across the university put together nearly 700 proposals for stimulus funding to the NIH and the National Science Foundation and others. 554 of those proposals came from our faculty members at the School of Medicine. And as of this afternoon, we had received 120 of those awards, of which 88 came from the School of Medicine. So, <laughs> so I think you can tell from those numbers that we have faculty members who are driven, they are creative, they are committed to advancing healthcare in the United States and around the globe. And of course, they have a tremendously talented physician researcher as their leader. My main job tonight is to introduce the dean of the School of Medicine. Don't get up yet, Pam, I'm not done. <laughs> Dr. Pam Davis is literally one of the smartest people I have ever known. <laughs> She serves in the President's Cabinet, and in the President's Cabinet, we have a rather small group. And everybody has some sphere of expertise, but everybody has to pitch in on everything. So Pam has shared her wisdom with us on a huge variety of topics, most of which have absolutely nothing to do with science or medicine or any of her areas of expertise, but she's such a valuable colleague. But what strikes me most about her is not her remarkable intellect or her amazing energy, but really, truly, how much she cares. When I hear her talk about her patients with cystic fibrosis and their families, you can hear her compassion as she talks about them. When she tells me about the success that our fourth-year students had in their matches, her excitement for their, for their results is incredible. And when she talks about a research breakthrough by one of our faculty members, her admiration of their work and her excitement about what this will mean for people is also evident. You would be hard pressed to find a person who believes more passionately in the mission of our School of Medicine. But you don't have to take my word for it. Just yesterday, we received the accreditation report, or maybe it was the day before. Anyway, this week, we received the accreditation report from the team that came to visit our school last spring. In detailing the school's strengths in their report, Dean Davis came first. So I'm quoting now. She has rapidly earned the respect and loyalty of all members of the medical school community due to her responsiveness to their input, her advocacy and support of the medical school's educational, research, and clinical missions, and her leadership in achieving substantive change. I couldn't have said it better myself, Dr. Pamela Davis. Well, I'm very grateful for that introduction. It's always nice when your boss is the one who gives it to you. <laughs> I'm gonna be telling you a lot more about the School of Medicine tomorrow morning at, uh, at the Dean's Breakfast. I get a little uh, uh, time for the state of the school. Uh, tonight really belongs to other people. Uh, Dr. Briggs, I want to thank you and the reunion class committees and extend my personal gratitude to each of you for your hard work and in your enthusiasm. Our alumni are truly the foundation of our great medical school. So on behalf of the faculty and the staff, thank you very much. When I go to alumni events around the country, I tell the alumni that you are what our students aspire to be, and we're very, very proud of you. 
I hope the, the weekend will be enjoyable for you in, and informative and fun, and I think it will be because of all of you. Dr. Greenberger, President of the Medical Alumni Board, please join me at the podium to announce the School of Medicine Award winners. Our first and most prestigious award is the Distinguished Alumnus Award. Tonight is being awarded to two alumni. This award is presented in recognition of outstanding service by an alumnus or alumna whose work has made a significant mark in the field of medicine and whose efforts have brought about distinction to the Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. The Distinguished Alumnus Award is presented to Dr. Kermit Newcomer. Dr. Newcomer is a member of the class of 1959 works as an international medical partnership consultant in Russia, the Ukraine, and several of the newly uh, new medical care delivery systems and effective modules. Prior to that time, Dr. Newcomer was a member of the Gunderson Clinic in La Crosse, Wisconsin, which as many of you may know is a practice of over 500 professionals in three states, where he served as president and CEO for six years Dr. Newcomer, please come forward and receive your award and be recognized. Our second 2009 Distinguished Alumnus Award is presented Stephen Altshuler, a member of the class of 1979. Uh, following his, uh, his, appointment, his appointment as the president and CEO of the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia in the year 2000, Dr. Altshuler uh, initiated the greatest period of growth the institution has known in its 156 year history. Today, it is rated the number one children's hospital in the United States by U.S. News and World Report. Please join me in honoring Dr. Altshuler as a Case Western Reserve University Distinguished Alumnus. Our next award of the evening is the Clifford Vote Award, who is a 1934 alumnus uh, of the School of Medicine. This is called the Clifford Vote Alumni Service Award. This award this year is being presented to two alumni who best emulate the spirit of Dr. Vote and unselfish devotion of time and activities that have benefited the Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. Uh, the first recipient is Dr. Edwin Eigner. <laughs> Dr. Eigner was Chief of Ophthalmology at Hillcrest Hospital for 10 years and an innovator in anterior segment surgery. He's a member of the class of 1954, which many of you can appreciate is now. Stay, Ed, come back here, please. I haven't finished. He was the past president of our Medical Alumni Association has served on the advisory panels of five previous medical school deans, and the list of his leadership and service to the school goes on and on. Dr. Agner, you can now please come forward and be recognized. <laughs> Our second recipient of the 2009 Clifford Vote Award is Dr. J. Richard Briggs. Dr. Briggs retired after 40 years from the orthopedic surgery practice he started in Columbus, Ohio. Tonight, as any of you, as all of you recognize, we are benefiting from his leadership and service, and most recently serving, as you know, as the chair of this year's reunion committee, and especially significant because Richard is also a member of the class of 1959. 
Please join us in honoring Richard Briggs. The next award this evening is the Medical Alumni Association Special Alumni Board Service Award. Uh, this award is presented to two individuals who have made extraordinary contributions to the field of medicine. Uh, the 2009 Medical Alumni Association Special Alumni Board Service Award is presented to Dr. Abby Abelson, a member of the class of 1979. Dr. Abelson. <laughs> is interim chair of the Department of Rheumatology and Immunologic Diseases at the Cleveland Clinic. She's also director of education for the Center for Osteoporosis and Metabolic Bone Disease. We are pleased to acknowledge Dr. Abelson for her active role in advancing the education of future physicians. Please come forward and be recognized. <laughs> Our second recipient of the 2009 Medical Alumni Association Special Alumni Board Service Award is presented to Dr. Christopher Brandt. Dr. Brandt is a member of the class of 1984, is Associate Chief of the Medical Associate Chief Medical Officer and Associate Director of the Burn Center at the Metropolitan Health Center. Since 1990, he's been director of the surgery clerkship actively involved in curricular design and surgical education at both the local and national level. Dr. Brandt, please come forward and be recognized. <laughs> the next award is the Honorary Alumnus of the Year. Let me take a minute or two and explain the genesis of this award. Uh, three years ago, uh, the Board of Directors of the Medical Alumni Association recognized the need to have a parallel award to that of the Distinguished Alumnus of the Year. And this was the, for the purpose of recognizing outstanding faculty members in the School of Medicine who were not graduates of the Western Reserve, Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine. And the criteria for this award as they were developed include but are not limited to outstanding scientific accomplishment, outstanding clinical research, outstanding teaching, and outstanding leadership. This year's winner of the Honorary Alumnus Award clearly exemplifies all of these qualities, and he is Dr. Nathan A. Berger. <laughs> Let me take just a minute or two to um, recapitulate some of Dr. Berger's very significant accomplishments. He earned his MD degree from Hanneman College in 1966. He went on to serve as Lieutenant Commander, United States Public Health Service, was a research associate at the NIH and the Gerontology Research Center. He completed fellowship training in hematology and oncology at Washington University School of Medicine and joined the faculty there before moving to Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine in 1983, as a professor of medicine and biochemistry and director of the hematology oncology service. Um, he became the founding director and award-winning cancer center um, at Western Reserve University, the Ireland Cancer Center, now designated a National Cancer Institute Comprehensive Cancer Center. He also has served as dean of the medical school for over seven years. Uh, today, Dr. Berger is the Hannah Payne Professor of Experimental Medicine and Director of the Center for Science, Health, and Society. Please recognize Dr. Nathan Berger. <laughs> I would like to hand the podium over now to Dr. Davis as we have a very special honor. Dr. Davis. I'd like to ask Dr. Ted Castell to come up and uh, help me do the honors, please. 
We have a very special form of recognition tonight in addition to Dr. Berger's Honorary Alumnus of the Year. To commemorate the devotion and leadership required of our medical school deans, a portrait is commissioned of each dean, which will hang in the Health Sciences Library to recognize your indelible mark on the outstanding legacy of this School of Medicine. Tonight we unveil for the very first time, and I have not seen this yet, it better be good, uh, <laughs> the portrait of Dr. Nathan A. Berger in honor of his remarkable services dean. They uh, told me that I could say as much as I wanted tonight as long as it didn't take more than five minutes. So I want to uh, thank uh, you for uh, being recognized as um, the honorary alumnus of the year. I've really been honored every day uh, by my association with Case Western Reserve University and all of you. I'm really honored that the institution allows me to continue my research and also that the NIH supports me to conduct the important work that we're doing on energy balance in cancer, on aging in cancer, and on the unexplained anemia of the elderly. I'm also uh, honored that, that we've been supported by uh, several of the foundations uh, in the city to uh, work with uh, high school students from the inner city to help uh, interest them in biomedical uh, health careers. I'm really honored every day by the opportunity to help patients and their families deal with malignancies and to have participated uh, in the tremendous advances uh, in medicine and in cancer research in the last 40 years. I'm honored every day by the opportunity to work with our distinguished faculty and our great student colleagues, many of whom are here tonight. They um, teach us every day, they keep us on our toes, and the most exciting thing about our students is they help us stay young. Um, I want to thank uh, my family, my fabulous wife Susie for uh, supporting me. Let's give Susie a hand. My, uh, kids who are here and uh, my two grandsons who are uh, three and four years old and who we've already uh, applied to medical school <laughs> for and we've taken out very healthy 529 plans to help them <laughs> afford medical school. I want to thank my brother Mel who got his uh, MD PhD here and uh, kept telling me what a wonderful place this was before I ever uh, was invited to come out here. I want to thank uh, Chuck Carpenter, who many of you will remember was the chairman of medicine, who recruited me to lead the hematology oncology division. And I want to thank the medical school and University Hospital. Uh, when I came here and they asked us to build a cancer program that they wanted to fill beds, I told them that we needed centrifuges and scintillation counters and research labs. Uh, and that we were going to build research uh, programs and the research programs were going to develop new approaches to cancer and new cures and that that would recruit the patients and what was amazing was they got it. And they provided us uh, the resources and as you heard, uh, we, uh, we built the cancer center at Case uh, and it's now recognized as uh, the Case Comprehensive uh, Cancer Center and uh, as may maybe you've seen or maybe you're aware that uh, we now have uh, a 200-bed uh, freestanding cancer hospital going up and we're going to have the uh, most preeminent cancer center here between MD Anderson in Texas and the Farber Center uh, in, uh, in Boston. And so we're really very, very proud of that. I want to thank the uh, institutional leadership uh, here at Case, all the deans, uh, both before and after me, and all the presidents uh, of the university who have supported the medical school, and all the board members, and several of you are here tonight for their contributions to building and maintaining this uh, great uh, institution. Somebody uh, said, when we reach for the stars, we stand on the shoulders of the giants who went before us. And uh, we certainly uh, do that here in Case, and all of you are the giants who help us uh, to reach uh, for the stars. Um, 
I uh, particularly want to take a minute to uh, acknowledge Neil Cherniak. Neil was the dean just before me, and many of you may have seen the obituary today. Neil died uh, two days ago after a brief uh, battle uh, with cancer. There are many people uh, in this room who remember Neil. There are many people in this room whose careers were made uh, possible uh, by Neil. He certainly helped uh, my career. Uh, and uh, we all remember him um, very fondly. I want to provide my special thanks to Ted uh, Castell, who has helped every dean and every president in this uh, university for the past 20 years. You just saw Ted up here for everything that he does for the medical school uh, and for the university. And the nicest thing that he did for me when, <coughs> when I first got here, or when I first became dean, was Every time I walked into a restaurant or a club, they always said, hi, Dr. Ted, should we just put this on your tab? <laughs> and it just worked. You see, you see, I think he may have even, and I said, of course. <laughs> uh, and of course, I want to thank the university and the medical school for letting me serve as dean uh, for seven years. It was clearly one of the most uh, exhilarating experiences of my uh, entire career, especially being able to work with the students. And the thrill that uh, uh, we get when we see the students start with the white coat ceremony and the thrill that the students and their parents uh, experience. And then when you see the students with their first hands-on experience with their patients and then to the time when they take the Hippocratic Oath uh, at graduation and then they begin to serve as our doctors, and the first time one of your students does your colonoscopy, it's all a thrill <laughs> and exciting. <laughs> and uh, much of the process of our uh, students um, is made possible by your commitments and your generous gifts, and we really appreciate that. And I must say that the greatest honor of all is knowing uh, what you, our graduates, do every day, what you do for your patients, what you do for your communities, and what you do for your alma mater. So thank you for being here tonight. Thank you for this recognition. Keep up your great work, and keep up your support for this great institution. You're fabulous. Thank you. Thank you. It's now a, a very special treat for me to introduce the class of 1959. Um, I'm a member of that class, and can you imagine um, how special it is for the president of the Alumni Association to be at this function on the event of his 50th reunion for medical school and to celebrate this with his classmates? Well, the class of 1959 uh, entered medical school with a little over 70 students. Uh, I think we graduated 68 or 69. But in those days, uh, class of 69 is one half of what the class is today. We got to know each other very well. We bonded. We expected to, we saw each other virtually every day during the first two years of medical school. Some of you even remember the seat you sat in. So I, I think it's special for me tonight to ask all the members of the class of 1959 to stand and be recognized. Please do so. Now, <clears throat> the members of the class of 1959 may not know this, but we have broken the world indoor record for 50th reunions by having 55% of our living classmates here tonight. We have 52 classmates that are living, and 29 of them are here with 22 of their spouses. So it's a remarkable testimonial to the affection that you feel for our medical school. I'm now gonna call on Dr. Richard Briggs who has a special comment to make. It's uh, wonderful to be recognized, but not, not just that. To, to see a living legend in his own time like Dr. Berger uh, tell us what he told us tonight and share in that experience. Uh, and to hear Pamela and Barbara and and the others uh, relate their experiences. This has been very special indeed. The, um, I would like to also uh, say something about the, um, the volunteers for the other classes as well. I noticed that in the, um, 
in the brochure tonight, there are eight uh, classes represented. And uh, yes, we had a nice, nice turnout in a nice committee, great committee. But I, I'm admiring the class of 79 and their committee. They had no chairman, they were all chairmen. They all participated together. And I think that deserves special mention. They, they just did a wonderful job. And in 20 years from now, I do hope that you break our record. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, thanks for a job well done and thank you to all the committees that made this happen tonight. Uh, and at this point, oh yes, uh, Dean Davis, on behalf of the Case Western Reserve University School of Medicine classes celebrating our Hallmark reunions this year, we present this check to you in the amount of $462,151 uh, to you in, uh, in support of the students and faculty of our alma mater, Case Western Reserve University. I want to take this opportunity uh, to thank Dick Briggs, who is our reunion chairman, uh, for your dedication to the School of Medicine. It's truly unparalleled. My hope is that with every reunion we host, we instill in young alumni the allegiance, commitment, and philanthropic spirit that you've demonstrated all these years. You've been terrific. In your honor, I pre present you with this small gift with our appreciation. You get something oh. else to take home. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Pamela. It's been a wonderful occasion for, for us who serve and uh, for those who are here. Uh, at this point, I think we've concluded our program. I'd like for you to continue the evening uh, uh, with visiting, reminiscing, uh, dancing, and we'll bring on the band, and thanks for being here. <laughs>